What's up guys and welcome back to Sliced. Now have you ever been in those situations where you want to make a nice dish for some guests but you have no idea what side dishes to put with it? Well today I'm going to show you how to make three super easy side dishes. And we're going to start off with roast potatoes, one of the most simplest and most basic side dishes that everyone should know how to make. So we're going to start by boiling those until they're soft and I'm going to use a fork to crush them ever so slightly. This will rough up the edges so that they get nice and crispy in the oven. And once I've pressed them and flattened all of them, I'm going to give it a generous seasoning with some salt, a crack of black pepper, I'm going to put some fresh rosemary sprigs all over the pan, and finally the ingredient that makes everything better, loads and loads of butter. So I'm going to take some butter, cut it into cubes, and just add it to that dish. And so I'm going to roast this in the oven for about 30 minutes at 200 degrees, turning it over halfway through so that they're nice and crispy on the outside and fluffy on the inside. And so while our roast potatoes are in the oven, we can make two more side dishes in that time. So the first is a spiced white radish, mango and carrot salad. White radish is something that you can find in many supermarkets, especially Asian ones. I'm going to start by topping and tailing it, peeling it, cutting it into some nice quarters and chopping them up nice and fine. And then I'll do the same with the carrot, except this time I'll cut them into different shapes. It's always important when you're making a salad to have different shapes and textures just to make things a bit more interesting. And so I'm going to cut these into sort of batons slash strips. And so finally I will move on to the mango by topping and tailing it. I'm going to work my way around the mango trying to remove the skin without cutting too far into the flesh. And once the mango is completely skinned, we can work around the pit to try and remove as much of the flesh as possible. Being careful not, ooh, being careful not to slip and mess up. I'm going to cut the flesh off the mango and dice it up into small pieces. Once you've done that, you're going to season it with a good amount of salt, some whole cumin seeds, some red chili flakes, and a really good squeeze of lime. And so after you've put your lime in, we're going to mix it all together. Now obviously when you realize that you've used a really small bowl, you're going to tip it into a larger bowl. And you can keep this in the fridge until you're ready to use it. Now for our final dish, we're going to be making mac and cheese. So in a large pot of salted boiling water, I'm going to add my macaroni and boil it for about 8 minutes so that it's still slightly underdone. And so in the meanwhile, I'll make the bechamel sauce by melting two parts of butter and adding one part of flour into it. For example, if I melt 100 grams of butter, I will put 50 grams of flour into that and cook it on a low heat. And what this will do is form a roux. And this is going to thicken our sauce once we add the milk to it. And so after a few minutes of cooking, it's gone lightly golden brown and that gritty flour texture has gone away. I'm going to add the milk to it and slowly bring it up to a heat so that it starts to thicken. I'm going to season this with some salt, some pepper and some nutmeg. And then I'm going to add some red Leicester cheese. This is going to add colour and it will also help thicken the sauce slightly. And red Leicester cheese is very important if you want that typical sort of yellowy orange mac and cheese colour. And so after a few minutes you'll start to see it thicken and you want to keep your eye on it making sure it doesn't go too far. And eventually, once it's thickened, you can add your drained mac and cheese to that. And it looks like there's a lot of sauce, but trust me, it's worth it. You want more sauce than you need, because when it goes into the oven, it will thicken up a lot more. So I'm going to add my mac and cheese to a tray, add some cheddar on top of that. And then I'm going to grill this in the oven for about 10 to 15 minutes so that it goes golden. And in the meantime, I'm going to chop up some chives real fine putting them in a tight bunch and finely chopping them and this will go as a garnish. And so finally we can bring everything together. Oh my gosh, that mac and cheese looks fantastic. We've got our mac and cheese, we've got our roast potatoes and we've got our salad. And the amazing thing about this is that it's so versatile. You can adapt these recipes, you can make it with chicken, you can make it with ribs, you can just keep them on their own if you want to keep it vegetarian. You can do literally whatever you'd like with it, be creative and try and adapt them as best as possible. Sorry, I'm not even focusing right now. I'm just looking at that mac and cheese. Wow. 
Okay, so now with our salad on the top, that's pretty much everything. So thank you very much for watching, guys. Please like, subscribe, follow me on my socials at sliced underscore yt, and please, please send pictures of your attempts.